Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of UC Solutions. If you saw the previous episode, you know that I made a big whoopsie when it comes to teaching women how to do as many throw pillows as they want, which we know that they like their throw pillows. Can't blame them, but you know, it's a little excessive. So I'm hoping to redeem myself by showing you guys how to do something else besides throw pillows. In this case, a skirt. That's right, we are getting into apparel. I'm wearing one right now. Scots can't have all the fun. No, I'm talking about the skirt that goes on your sofa or chair, okay? In fact, in particular with this video, it's gonna be for your sofa, which is great because it's harder to do it for a sofa than it is a chair. So if you know how to do it for that, you'll definitely know how to do it for a chair. So without further ado, go ahead and jump into the video as I explain to the newcomers what this series is about. This series is an eight part series detailing the basics for reupholstering using a sofa, okay? If you wanna see the full length video, it's eight hours long on our website, ucprivatecourses.com. Now you're gonna pay $30 for the course, but if you're like, hey, listen, I don't wanna do that. I totally understand. You can actually get that full course for free. And I'll show you exactly how to do that later in the video. So without further ado, and on that note, Let's get into the video. Before we go any further, we wanted to let you know uh, about the skirts, cutting them down, because we've already cut out, how many did we cut out? Like Four. Four, okay. Yeah. So we already cut out four. For sofa, you're gonna need seven at 60 inches. So we did 60 inches. We have a finished depth of the skirt on the actual sofa of 10. Mm -hmm. So you need to cut it two inches uh, deeper than that. So you're gonna do 12. And we'll show you why later on. Right, because obviously you need a finished look on it when it's actually on the sofa. Mm -hmm. So we need uh, three more out of this. If you're gonna be doing a love seat, you're gonna need six. If you're gonna be doing a chair, you're gonna need four. Uh, of course, when we run across skirts again in the video later on, we're gonna reiterate that depending right. on which one we're using. Right. You know, sofa, love seats, chair, you get it. Mm -hmm. So. Make sure you continue to mark your fabric up. Yes. We're going important. to cut 60 inches. That's what we do, as we mentioned earlier, for railroading. Yes. And the good news about this, it has a line. All I gotta do is mark it right there. I'm gonna cut all the way up. We don't have anything above that to be working with. Mm -mm. Uh, actually, you know, I'm gonna stop myself there. What we could do is we only need three more, okay? Because we need seven for the surface, right. Grant just said. We could make that zipper bands if we wanted to. Which in fact, zipper bands are 46 inches. And I'm just double checking, da 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 da. Yeah, yeah, so that that's the only thing that we could really be cutting. 46 is uh, zipper bands? Zip, zipper bands, okay, we got the panels too. Cause it'll be over with. And then the seat cushions. Yeah, yeah. Seat cushions, seat cushions are too wide. Yeah, so let's do the um, zipper bands. Okay, so they're five inches, the zipper bands. That's yes. cut, and they're gonna be sewn, finished at four inches. So we're gonna need three more skirts. They're 12 inches each. That's gonna be 36 inches. So okay. then, oh, sorry, go ahead. So I'm gonna go up 40, because I don't like including the selvage here. No. Okay, so I'm gonna come up like maybe an inch, and then make a clean line, and then start doing my skirt length, um, or uh, depth. Rather. Right. Okay, so I'm gonna go up to 40 here, and you wanted to say something? Yeah, something about the uh, zipper bands. Don't forget you're gonna need four for two cushions because you're gonna be folding them in half. You got it? Okay. Thank you, man. So you're gonna see that at the end, but just trust me, you're gonna need four for two cushions or two for one cushion. So. That's the way we do it. That's the way that's it's That's how we roll. That's right. Some people do it different ways, but. I kinda like it, it but yeah. I just got accustomed to doing this. Yeah. My dad taught me that way, so. It's familiar. Yeah. Okay, so we're making the mark at 40 here. Thank you. you I'm there? good. You there? Yep. I just did a little bit there, but it's just zipper bands. Mm -hmm. Hold on. Sometimes if your hand's in the way, you won't realize it, and while you're marking, it pushes your pen hand out away from the ruler, so just be careful with that if you're going too quick. On good fabric. On good fabric, exactly. Okay, now like I said. Cut this I'm down. Come up, yeah, please, in the zipper bands. I'm gonna come up an inch. I'm gonna bring this down to the edge of the table. The fabric, that is, okay. And I'm gonna come up probably maybe, maybe an inch and a half, okay? Oops. Let's do an inch and a half. Make a mark here. 
the T-square is against the table. The fabric is against the table. Pretty square, not bad. Inch and a half right here. Inch and a half. Okay, I'm gonna make the line. Just give us a nice clean start. That's all I'm doing. Gotcha. You good? Uh, yep. Sorry. Him. Not working. Okay, good. I got you. Okay. Cut that off. And then I'll start making the mark for the 12 inch skirts. Not use. Okay, there we go. Oh, we got my tape measure there. Perfect. Don't forget your arrows. I think I already mentioned that, but. Going up 12? 12, yep. Twelve, twelve, and what's next? Twelve. Yeah, so that would be tw uh, twelve, twenty-four, and thirty-six. Yeah, that should be good. Perfect. Now we'll just make those marks. Tell me when you're there. I'm there. Okay, I'm there too. Okay. Sweet. Bring on down. There? Yep. Now it's not working again. There you go. Okay. And there. There. All right. Okay. That is it. Now we're going to cut these off, make our arrows. Grant started doing the arrows. That's awesome. Okay. That's all you want here, right? Ooh. Yeah, ooh. She's Mobile. got so much extra fabric. That's right. Incidentally, you want to know how much fabric you need? Look at the PDF chart. Yes. Uh, I guess it's in a description. Yeah, it's in the um, course. Just be uh, careful because obviously it does vary. You could have a really big sofa with really big arms, and sometimes the arms do take up a lot more than you think. Yeah, they do. It's a new day, and we're almost finished with the sofa. Yeah, it looks great. It's looking really good. It's going to look great with the actual cushions finished and the skirt. Yeah. And that's what we're working on next is the skirt. So how do you know what to measure or where to measure or where to go about? And that's what we're about to discuss is the height off the floor. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's the first thing we want to discuss. How do you know how high to bring it off the floor? Now, um, you could do three quarters of an inch or sometimes to a half inch as well. So um, it's really up to you because when you start to staple on the skirt, which we're going to show you later on, it sometimes has a tendency to rise up a little bit more when you fold it back down. So even if you mark, for example, this skirt is at uh, 10 inches finished. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. even if you marked on your furniture to put the skirt at 10 inches and three quarters, 10 and three quarters of an inch, right at there, then when you actually start stapling, and it fold can, it back down, you fold it back down, the skirt can be a little bit more than three quarters of an inch above the, um, the floor. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, the, the standard, I do know I mentioned this, the standard is between three quarters and a half, an inch and a half. Well, it seems like a lot, and that is a lot, a half, it inch is. and a half, that an is floods. And yeah, it's so floods. So we really don't like that look at all, so. I think the inch and a half came from, I'm glad we were talking about this, when yeah. shag carpet. Yeah. I think that's yeah. when it came from. So you can pretty much scrap the inch and a half now. I don't think anybody does an inch and a half anymore. No. Uh, we got a lot of uh, sisal woods, or uh, carpets, I think they're called. Sisal, mm -hmm. I think it is. Um, if not woven woods, whatever they're called. And hardwood floors. Yeah. Okay, so no I like to work between three quarters of an inch. That's kind of the spot I'm trying to hit. And it doesn't look bad when you're looking, when you're standing up, because no. hopefully you're not laying down all the time <laughs> looking at your skirt. So when you're standing up, it doesn't look bad. No, it doesn't. No. So I shoot for three quarters of an inch or a half inch off. So this one, I'm deciding to go for a half inch. Okay, so we're changing it to a half inch. So yeah. all the way around, this is the whole point, is you need a mark 10 and a half right. with stick pins. Right. So you don't want to do, um, you do it in your corners, you do it in your center. In fact, we need to explain that as well of where it's going to be. 
So for example, right, right here I got 10 and a half. Yeah. Okay, and 10 and a half going around the corner right here. Perfect. So you were saying? For example, real quick, let's just say, you know that your corners need to have 10 and a half, but how do you measure for your center? And would you measure just for your center? Mm -hmm. Well, it really depends on how many seat cushions seat you cushions. have for your sofa. Right. Because depending on that, that's how many pleats you will have in the front. So for example, this one is only a two-seater sofa, so you only have one in the middle because mm -hmm. it's right where the two seat cushions meet. But if you have three, you need one right where the left, or yeah, let me do it like mm -hmm. this way. The sitting. right seat cushion sitting down on the sofa. The right seat cushion meets the middle cushion. The middle cushion meets the left cushion. Right where those meet, that's where your pleats would be for your front alone. Mm -hmm. This is for a standard kick pleat and or tailored skirt. They both have the uh, their same meaning. I said front alone, but would you ma match the front to the back? So would you have three pleats or would you just do a center pleat? That's a good question. If you had three seat cushions, yeah. no, you would just do one in the center. One in the center. And the reason, and you can go, I'm glad you're asking all these questions. You could go with no pleat in the center in the back, okay? Mm. In the front, you could do it, but it's not, it's just not traditional. It's no. not standard. You could do it though. Here is going to be your problem. Every time you run something really long, it has a tendency to definitely get twisted and get yeah. skewed from the sewing. So the actual pleats break up that. Uh, issue or or stop that issue, I should say, uh, from it like a skewing, like maybe the top pulled a little bit more than the bottom, and you can tell. So the longer the run, same thing with cushions, the more problems you're going to have. You probably might see in your pattern too, as well. Yes, you would. If it gets it skewed, it's because the weird thing is, if you think about, it, let's just say you have your um, tape measure off or your ruler off just a little bit, the longer you go, the further away you are from mm -hmm. where you originally wanted to be. Mm -hmm. So it's the exact same thing with a long run with a skirt. Yeah. So it's it's going to have problems more than likely. It, more than likely. So I think uh, we gave you a lot of information yeah. there for you to simulate, uh, rewind, and uh, listen to it again. Yes. But what we need to do, as I showed you, we came f up from the floor up 10 and a half because our finished skirt is going to be 10 inches. Right. And this is another good point as well. If you notice right now, since our table is padded, mm -hmm. this thing will sink down into there, especially with the glides that we have on. Right. So we wanted to get a true measurement, and that's why we put the boards here. Another thing is, I mentioned the glides. Let's just say you turn over your sofa on its back, and mm -hmm. you're looking at the legs, the bottom of the legs, and the front two legs have glides, and the back two legs don't. Or one's missing for some reason. You dragged it and you forgot. And or some of them break off. Some of them break off. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. What you need to do is, first of all, realize if you want to have glides. Mm -hmm. because which you if, should. Which you should. If you do, and if you, you should, you should go ahead and replace all the glides before you go ahead with this process. The reason why is, let's just say you say, well, I don't want to go out to the store right now to go get the glides, and you take out all the glides so you're all level, that's good. You do your skirt, once you add on the glides, those glides are about a quarter inch, so you're mm -hmm. gonna be going up a quarter inch. So if you're shooting for three quarters of an inch, you're hitting an inch now mm -hmm. after you put on those glides. From the, from the bottom of your skirt to the floor. Exactly, mm -hmm. so just make sure you have glides that you want on there, everything's ready to go, you have a nice uh, area to work on where it is a true measurement that you can do and you'll be fine. That's a very good advice, yeah. And if you don't have glides on there and you don't want it to come up so high, just right. knock it down a little bit, like a quarter of an inch, put on your glides, it'll come up to the, the finished height that you want. Exactly. Okay? So, that being said, we went all the way around the sofa. Mm -hmm. This corner, that corner, that corner. This center. Right there. And we made it 10 and a half inches from the floor up, okay? Right. With the glides on. Right. Okay? Now, we did it in the center as well. We went left and right, and we got a measurement. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And, whoops, sorry. We got a measurement fault. here, and we cut it in half. Right, so I have 80 right here, so it should be at 40. Yep, it's at 40. Okay. To test it, flip it around, come this direction, it should say 40, and then you know you're even. Okay? Yeah, double check it. Always important to do that. We did the same thing in the back as well, to yep. make a pleat in the center in the back. Okay? Exactly. All right, so. Ten and a half inches up, and just doing a recap. Mm -hmm. Get your center in the front. Mm -hmm. Get a center in the back as well. Yes. And now we need to make a chalk mark. Okay. Okay, a nice faint chalk mark, because that's where we're gonna actually 
uh, staple the skirt to the piece of furniture. Right, and we have a good tip for you too that you might want to get, if you have to go get glides, you might want to get this as well at the store, but we'll show you in just a second. All right, so let's get started with the chalking. Excellent. So now we got to make our line where we want to hang our chalk, okay? So you're doing this by yourself. It can be a bit of a challenge to keep the straight edge or ruler from sliding down a lot. So go with a shorter straight edge where this one's 60 inches, this one's 72. It's a little harder to handle the 72. Yeah, I can imagine, yeah. So since you can't run all the way down, you're gonna put another pin here, which is two and a half, or I'm sorry, 10 and a half inches. Okay, so I put that one here to shorten my distance. You can put as many as you want, obviously. In so fact, you can maybe, if you don't mind jumping mm -hmm. in, Throw a stick pin in so it holds the ruler for you a little bit more too. The zones is right in the, right in the uh, where it needs to be. Perfect. Okay? okay. So what we like to do is make our marks with chalk. Okay. Obviously, you can tell this is white chalk. I have an old pencil sharpener that helps me sometimes, or you can just simply to make a point of it, or you can just use the edge right here. Okay. Or you can simply take a dull pair of scissors and then sharpen it down till you make yourself a nice little point. You can do that as well. This is simple, regular chalk, okay? The reason why I'm emphasizing that is I don't want you to use, unless you wanna take the chance, this is called Taylor's chalk. But what this really is, is this is like a wax, okay? You're not gonna be able to remove that if for some reason you have your measurements wrong and or you can see it when you're finished, mm -hmm. okay? One other thing, so don't use this, okay? Unless you wanna take the chance. I use regular chalk. It can be easily blown out, okay? Another thing you can do, I incorporated this uh, years ago, which I love it. This is an actual, we use this for slip covers. This is a um, chalk line. I can get it out of the bag. It's a chalk, okay, be that way. It's a chalk line that you've probably seen it before. When you pull it out, it's gonna drop chalk, okay? So you have to be careful if you're gonna be using one of these that you do not have too much chalk in there. You want just enough to make the mark, but not enough when you pull it out, it's all over your white rug or your client's white rug. So have something underneath. If you're concerned about it, take it in a safe place and pull a whole bunch of string out so it does start to release. I don't I doubt you can see that on the film. Oh yeah. You can? Mm -hmm. and so then you would leave this hanging like this and that would get a lot of that off. You could take the point of it, as we do the same thing for slipcovers, watch our slipcover video, okay? You'll see what we're doing and you could, um, hook this on with like a T-pin, okay? That's a T-pin because it looks like a T. And you anchor that and you can pull it down to the line and snap that. Here's a word of caution. I'm using blue because that's what I had around the shop. I would really rather have white, but I have so much blue I gotta get through it, okay? And I'm doing pretty well over the years, right? It'll last for years. I would only use white. It's not gonna become a problem until you're using white fabric or you're working with white fabric. So I would have two colors, not blue, I would use yellow. Yellow and white seem to be the best colors that we, you should use for chalking, okay? So you got three methods there. The chalk line with the proper color, a simple white chalk stick if you wanna sharpen it up, and do not, well you don't have three choices, you have two, and do not use this. Okay. Okay, I would not use that because if you make a mistake, it ain't coming out. Mm -mm. All right, so that being said, all I'm gonna do, hold this up. We know it's 10 and a half. I'm making the straight edge sit right on top. And I'm going to try to make a visible but reasonably faint, it's harder right here, reasonably faint faint chalk line. Okay, I'm having a hard time right there. I'll have to go over there. Just like this. It is helpful if you can get, helpful if you can get someone to give you a hand. See, it just slid, give you a hand. So the chalk line is faster. Thank you, Grant. Grant's holding it now. Okay, just like that. And I'm gonna show you real quick while I was having a hard time over here. I might need to get a, sh a smaller roller. You can let go now. Let me grab this one right near your elbow. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna get a more manageable one for me. 
Now, if you notice, I'm holding the straight edge above. Let me, let me just demonstrate. If I did it here, okay, let's just say by chance, I accidentally hit this and went up. Mm -hmm. Now I got a problem on finished fabric. Yeah. Okay, so do it above it. It seems to eliminate that problem. There's no padding behind it. That's why I'm having a problem right here on the arm, but we'll get past it. Now, double check from your board. We're at 10 and a half at the top, 10 and a half. Drop a little bit there, but no big deal, 10 and a half. And there you go. So simply do that all the way around your sofa and we'll be back to you to show you the actual um, putting together the skirts. All right, so what Dad has right now is he has an escorting for the whole skirt and he's just mocking it up where we did the chalk line. So he's putting the basically the seam of the chalk or of the uh, cording, correct, where the mm -hmm. chalk line is. That's top right. Of the chalk line is. And you always want to shoot for the top of the chalk line. Just double check to make sure that that is closest to the 10 and a half. If it's a little bit off, you're okay. I'm talking about a little bit like an eighth of an inch off. Maybe a little bit more than that, but mm -hmm. I wouldn't go any more than that. And what he's doing now is putting in pins to put it up near that chalk line, as I stated before. And he's gonna start marking off where each pleat's gonna be. So for example, this corner is gonna be a pleat. Then he has to mark what that is, because when you take this, we're gonna be taking this cording back off, and this is gonna represent where our pleats need to be for our skirts. When you take this off, it's still just a bunch of cording, and you don't know exactly which is which. So, he's gonna make some little marks. For example, this is gonna be the right front pleat, or panel, I should say, and this is the left front pleat panel, right there. And then you're gonna have one in the center as well, you need to mark that and then one in the center in the back, and then of course on the two other corners. So as he finishes this is up, we're gonna get back to you after this is done, and we're gonna show you how to actually start making the skirt itself. Great. Okay, I'm just sticking the pins in here. I'm going, I'm trying to put the seam allowance right here, right on top of the chalk line there. So right where the seam is? Yeah. I gotcha. Yeah. And I am pulling kind of tight. We need this to be snug, real snug. It really wants to hug this furniture. Right. Because you're That's basically made in be, heaven. Huh? That's funny. <laughs> so you're basically trying to make it where this is a belt for the furniture. Exactly. That's a good way of saying it. Yes. It's going to be snug when you put it on so that way it holds itself when you staple. Yeah. Okay. Now I like the T pins, but I'm running out of them. These are these are really nice. I mean, as I was mentioning earlier for the chalk line. Yeah. But I got to get me some new. I've lost too many of them. Probably left them in the skirt. Okay, so as I said, I am pulling. Just trying to dig that down in there. I'm gonna stop, because you're getting the point when I hit this corner here in a minute. It does not hurt to go back and double check your height with a tape measure to see if you are hitting your mark, because you know when you put this thing on, we're gonna check too when we actually install the skirt, of course. But just make sure everything's right. Incidentally, you have to make it where, excuse me, you're gonna have to put the chalk mark where it's gonna be finished because some furniture flares out at the bottom. So let's just say the side over there starts here and it flares out. You have to put this um, cording where it, you need it to be finished. Right. Because if not, if you go just say a half inch or even a three quarters too low, you're like, oh, it's no big deal. It is a big deal because you're never gonna get it to pull up. Got it. Once we sew this thing in, as you said, which is a good illustration, into a big belt. I get exactly what you're saying. Some furnitures are water at the top than they are at the bottom, basically. Some of them are. Right. I think, yeah, a good amount of them are, actually. Or the frame's just out of square. Mm -hmm. That happens a lot. Okay, I'm going to stop right here. Now what I want you to do is, as we're sitting, I think Grant mentioned it earlier, as we were sitting in the chair, you want to make your marks. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the left side, so this is going to be our left front. If you can, write it right on the, the sew allowance of the welt. So that's going to be LF. Okay, if you put a piece of paper, that's fine. But paper falls off and you don't know where you are now. 
if, you know, I guess they all wouldn't fall off. But now here's our center mark right here. This is where I want our pen, okay? So what I like to do is I put a C. So that's where the pleat's gonna be, center pleat? Thank you, yes. A C and a, a line through it, okay? That means center. Looks kind of terrible from here, but that's okay. We know that's it. Now another thing you can do is take a pen here and go right through your welt. And you know that's where a pleat goes because that's your signature, if you would, okay? Got now, it. Now, over here, we're going to do, uh, let me say, uh, right. left, right, thank you, because everything's backwards. So mm -hmm. right, front, thank you, at RF, right here. You just know that that's where your right front goes. And now I'm going to come to the corner here, and I want another pleat right here. And I'm gonna do this all the way around the sofa. I got a pen. Now let's just say that thing fell out. Now we got a problem. But if you put a mark right here, you know a pen should have been there if it fell out, but you know a pleat goes there. Got it. So mark your corners. Put a pen in there. Right front for the right front skirt when you're sitting in the, in the furniture. Center pleat right here, pen in there left front from when you're sitting in the sofa, and then your corners, and you do this all the way around. And then when we're coming to the end, we're putting the, the joining cords in an inconspicuous area. So if it's floating out, like for example, if the sofa doesn't go against the wall, it's floating in the room, it may seem minor, but you never know. Why don't you just put it in an area that's maybe near a coffee table, and when you're sitting in the sofa, the right side, there's a coffee table, no one's gonna see it there. Just try to think of those small details because they do add up over time where you're gonna put it. This one, Grant and I decided because of the layout of this lady's room, we're gonna put it while you're sitting in the sofa on the right side, okay? Mm -hmm. And you know, it, it'll look a lot better if she starts to examine it really closely. Exactly, so I'm gonna pan over so you can see it. That's where we started and that's where we're gonna stop too. So mm -hmm. that's where this seems gonna be. So we'll be right back. Okay, so we came all the way around the sofa. We made all our marks, just like we mentioned earlier. Pull these two together, and this is where you're gonna have your actual seam. I'm making it pretty tight here, okay? Honestly, I think sometimes I pull it a little too tight. So be careful, try to find a happy medium there. And I'm just gonna make a mark right, right here. And this is our actual seam allowance. It's a little, a little rough there, but that's okay. I'm trying to make the bottom one a little more visible. This is where the seam allowance is gonna be, right here. So I want it to be joined together. Now what I need to do is take everything off, or out rather, all these pens, all right? Except we're gonna leave the, the uh, the corner ones, of course. Right, so that, that white mark that you just put on the cordings, that is where you're gonna sew, correct? Yep. Got it. I'm gonna cut these back and, and sew those together on the sewing machine. So let me take this thing off. We're gonna sew it into a loop. Right. And like I said, leave these pins in. But if, if you make a mistake, you know that your, your pen mark here on the uh, seam allowances, you know that's a pleat. And you have your marks as far as this is the right back, this is the uh, right side, RS, so you know where to start when you sew this thing together. Okay, so we're gonna make a mark right here, because I need to know the chalk, I'm not gonna be able to see very well. So I'm making a, a cut right there. These scissors are a little dull on the point. This is where the other one is. I don't know if you can see that, but it's very faint right here. And this is where I wanna make my seam allowance. Okay, as I sit here and gnaw at this fabric, Okay, I'm gonna come a little closer. Don't need that much. And so how far away are you cutting from your white mark? About two inches. Got it. Just to give me a little room. Now let's open them up. I'll give us a little more light. I'm opening it up past the cuts in the chalk mark.
This fabric wants to fray a little bit, so I'm trying to be as careful as I can with it. Not pulling at it, you know what I'm saying? Just mm -hmm. separating it. I'm gonna give myself a little room here. Okay, so now I see my cuts. See that? And you see them too, right? Yep. Now let's do the same thing on this side here. You got to make sure too, and I'm going to show you that when we sew this, the, the welt is not twisted on itself because it's not going to come undone if you sew this into a loop. Got it. I have a tight stitch on the sewing machine. It's at a number two for this machine. Okay. Now, let's pull these together. What I want to do Try to keep, well, not try. I got to keep these even, going the same direction. That is, okay, like that. So not twisted. Not all twisted, you know, like this one. That, you know, it's just going to become a mess. It's going to be a problem. Okay. Okay. So I'm keeping these heading the right direction, like so. I didn't get it exactly even, so I'm gonna have to redo that. Cause I gotta bring them down together, so I did not have them even. So let's try this again. Let's see if I can do it this way. Okay, hold on. I'm going to go back. Just to double check. You see what I'm doing, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, make sure my pen doesn't come out. That's why we make those marks. That pen was close to coming out. So they're facing this way. I got my cuts there, I got my cuts there, okay? I'm just gonna go straight on. You could, if you wanted to, come at an angle. You could do that if you, if you wanted to. Straight on is simple and fast. It is. So I'm going to go from one end to the other, all right? And then when it's done, hopefully you don't see the chalk mark, but if, I, if not, I can blow that out. Um, That's another point, point too. When you do that mark, do it with the chalk mark. Yes. It's a late now to tell you, but please watch this whole video before you start. <laughs> <laughs> that would be helpful. So like I said earlier, I got a tight stitch. I'm lining those up together those cuts that is. I'm gonna go a little bit in front of the cut, just a little bit. Don't forget the back stitch. You're gonna want a tight stitch as you're gonna hear when you watch these videos over and over and over. I don't know if this is the first video you saw or not. You don't wanna see the white cording when you put this thing on. No. So you want a tight stitch so you're not going to see the white cording showing In between your seams, In between basically. the seams. Thank you, Grant. Okay, I cut that a half inch. Okay. Okay. Now, I'm going to open this up. Now, when I stretch it on the furniture, i got to pass these up here, okay? I don't like putting the cut. Hold on one second, I interrupted myself. I don't want to put the cut in the middle there. I like to run it off to the side here. I'm going to put a snip here. I'm not going to cut them both at once. Right there. OK. 
kept missing my holster. I want these to run just, I'm pulling it just a little, I'm not pulling it too hard, but when you put it on the furniture, it will stretch, so they start to pull apart. So make sure these are kind of pulled a little bit, okay? And you see what I'm doing? Mm -hmm. Just trying to make, now I'm gonna cut it about right here. I did it the wrong way. I'm gonna cut it a little bit longer because it kind of wants to pull away. I'm just cutting a little bit longer. Okay, so I have to kind of stretch it. You see how I'm doing that? Definitely. It's a little stretched too much. I don't like that, but we'll work through it. You can take a piece of tape. Some people do this. This is cheap tape. It's pretty lousy. But you can take a piece of tape and tape them to, oh, forget it. <laughs> and tape them together to hold them. See how lousy this yeah, is? Yeah, it must have been the first one they ever did. I mean, it's so <laughs> old. Okay. No, well, early childhood. It makes sense. It's what it says. All right, so just try to put a piece of tape right there and here. Wrap it around, of course. You know that. Now let's move this over the foot that is here on the sewing machine to a um, cording foot. Let's close this up. Back to the same cording foot that we used before, which is a quarter inch um, for this cord. So yes, yeah, special. everything's the same. You're right, as as what we spoke before. Exactly. You don't need such a tight stitch, so I'm cranking that back up for a longer stitch. Saves on thread, saves on time. Yeah. Start back here. I like to cut the threads out of the way because you just end up finding it later on, having to cut it out. It's going to get real thin, I'm afraid. Okay, that's going to be a problem right here. Hmm. Now, see, since this cording is long, when I'm having to stretch it in there, it's becoming a problem. It's too short. Mm. This was a, the, the, the well kind of waved in and out, unfortunately. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to close this up or not. It's getting real close here. Yeah, unfortunately, when um, we have that wooden strip and we think it's getting a little thin in some areas. It looks like Dad's pulling it off. I'm going to have to double check that. That's going to be tough when I'm sewing that, but it's should be okay, but then you get to see the idea right there. If I can sew this thing down, it'll be fine. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let me let me examine this and see if I need to do any improvement. It was too thin. When we cut that, that, um, that welt, it was not an inch and a half. It was a little too close. Could have been a bottom piece that moved a little bit. So that, that could be a problem as well. Okay, so let me see. I can look this over and then we'll move on. Excellent. Okay guys, so we have reached the part where we're gonna show you how to get that video that you want for free on our website. You have several videos to choose from, so choose wisely. But before I get to that, I wanna go ahead and say thank you guys so much for watching these videos. It really does mean a lot to me, but most importantly, it means a lot to my dad. So we really do appreciate it. If you like this type of content, 
please go ahead and give that like button a click and then we know to keep making more content for you guys okay and what you like and what you don't i think they got rid of the dislike button but you know you can tell us in the comment and that is the next thing if you have any suggestions for the next video what you like what you don't like give it in the comment section below if you have any questions same thing right there we'll get back to you now finally we upload a video every single tuesday if you want us on our feed Click the subscribe button and we'll be that punctual neighbor every Tuesday and say, hey, how's it going? And we get to interact with each other. It's going to be great. So go ahead and do that if you're interested in every Tuesday getting a video from us. Now, when it comes to that course that you want, I'm going to show you exactly how to do it. It's really simple. You're going to go to ucprivatecourses.com. On the home page, you're going to scroll down and go to the button that says video tutorials. Once you click that button, it's going to take you to four different options that you could select and get for free. So let's just say we do the sofa video because that's what we're doing right now. You click that and then you click the button that says add to cart. There's going to be a little box that pops up and it's going to ask for your email address. And you might be thinking to yourself, I don't really want to give out my email address if it's going to be bombarded with a bunch of emails. And I don't blame you. I wouldn't either. I don't like when people do that to me. So I'm definitely not going to do that for you guys. It's just me and my lonesome that would be sending out these emails. And um, yeah, I'm probably going to send out one every single month, you know, with an offer that I think you guys might like. But other than that, you're not going to hear from me that much. So don't worry about that. We're not going to go bombard your email with um, a bunch of different like offers and stupid stuff like that. But what you are going to get from us right away is the coupon code that you can apply to your cart to zero out the cost the actual video. It's as simple as that. You go ahead and finish out the actual checkout, as it were, with zero cost, and then you can watch the video as much as you want on our website. And that's it. So check it out, ucprivatecourses.com. Now let's get back to that skirt. Okay, so we have the cord all sewn, ready to go on. Yes. The next step is to cut our skirts, and we cut them out earlier 60 inches wide, and that's going to be more than enough, okay, because uh, from here to here is only what? It's uh, 40 inches. 40, so what do we need to cut them then? We need to cut them at 48, we add eight inches to that. Exactly, okay, perfect. So when I did 60, that's gonna stop right here. It's gonna leave us 12 inches on this side. Got it. We need back panels to go behind these pleats. You're gonna need one here, one here, one there. So a total of six, because you got one in the center of the back too. All right, so what we can do is cut the two fronts. I got my arrows pointing up, that's important. Cut the two fronts, they're gonna be equal. Mm -hmm. And then the uh, back panels, we'll get two of them here, which could be you know here and here. And we need a total of six, as I said, but the, the depth is already cut for us. Right, so we already did 12 because we wanna finish at 10, mm -hmm. so you add two inches to where your finished measurement is. And yes. we'll show you how that works out after. Yes, exactly. Okay, so what I need to do is cut these two at 48, right, mm -hmm. that's what you said. Right. And now our sides are how long? So, so those are 33 and a quarter on the sides finished. 30. So we need to cut them out at 41 and a quarter. Okay, so that too will give us plenty. Uh, that is 19 inches. Okay, so. We uh, could technically get both. Yeah, we could get yeah. both back panels out there. Okay, so that, that'll be good. So cutting them at 60 helps out because I didn't mention to you earlier because we weren't there yet that you need back panels for this. Mm -hmm. Now say for example, you're really short on fabric. You can go up you know, through the bolt, I should say, going, cutting into the bolt. You can do that uh, with cutting your skirts to the finished size, including the eight inch. Right. Because you don't have to cut the 60. You can find the back panels in other areas is my whole point in telling you. Uh, inconspicuous areas, kind of crappy fabric or something like that. Something I've been throwing in the trash, you could use that, but we had plenty of fabric. Right. So we, we, um, we're incorporating the back panels off to the sides here. So basically you're saying you can get the, pan the back panels out of whatever you can. Yes. The best that you can. Right, so if you're really nervous, like I don't have much fabric here, then do, uh, don't do the top fabric on the seat platform and cut your skirts as you measured, okay, before you started tearing all this down where everything is, you can cut those out, including your eight inches and including the proper depth, okay? Got it. And just to reiterate, back panels are the mm -hmm. stuff that goes behind the main panel right. so that when you have the pleat, you don't, you're don't you not looking straight through and see the leg. Yes, exactly. So. All right, so I'm gonna go through the chart. We added eight inches just to re, uh, recap. 
mm -hmm. to, to all the skirt sizes. Mm -hmm. And the back kick panels are gonna be cut eight inches. Mm -hmm. And we already have our depth of 12 inches. Perfect. Okay, so I'm gonna move on and get that done. Excellent, man. All right. Okay, so now we're gonna cut the liner for the skirts. And you're gonna cut the liner for the skirts, the finished size. Okay, so it's gonna be 10 inches, mm -hmm. where the top fabric was 12 inches. And again, we're gonna show you why we're doing that, okay? Okay. It's gonna be too hard to explain. It's gonna be easier for you to see it. Yeah, I agree with that. We're gonna do 60 inches. Okay. And that's what this ruler is, is 60 inches. Got a stubby gonna, little pencil here yeah. to mark that. So we're gonna go, and it works. So we're gonna go up 10 inches. We're okay. gonna six times. And incidentally, I said earlier, for a sofa, you'll need seven skirts. That is for a three seat cushion sofa, okay? Because you'd have three pleats in the front, two in the back, that's five, two on the sides, that's seven. This is a two seater, so we only need six, okay? okay. If you did a love seat, it's gonna be six because they're generally pretty much always two seaters. I've never seen a three seaters love seat. Mm -hmm. All right, that's I like that. More than love, that's a crowd. That's funny. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so now let's start here before you mark there. I don't know how many it's gonna get in here. We got 10. I so got a 50 mark right here. How wide is this thing? You got 50? Yeah. Okay, that's perfect, Grant. Good job. It's only 55, so we're gonna have to go down 60 again. Yeah. To get six. Damn there. Okay, so I got 50 right here. Perfect, so I'm gonna mark 10 here. Okay. Um, mark... I do, can I borrow your tape measure real quick? 20, do I have one on me? Yeah. I'm gonna do uh, the however much it is here. 20, 30, Which 40, and you did 50. 60 is right there. Oh, wow, that was close. So, might as well. Wait, one second, wait, okay. Yeah, okay, thank you. All right, good enough. Yeah. All right, now we're just gonna mark up here, same thing. Exactly. So I'll get the 50. Yeah, good, go to the, I did kind of clean up the edge. Okay, 40. So I got 10, 20. And I got 30. Okay. Excellent. Line these up. Teamwork. Teamwork, that's right. There is no up or down on this. I think you already know that. And we're just gonna get one more because we need six. This is only gonna give us five. Mm -hmm. And when we get this cut out, we'll be right back. Excellent. Okay, so we have a pile of skirts here. Yep. As you can tell, they already have their buckram or their stiffener in there. Okay, they're good to go. We did them all except for two. Okay. Awesome, so we can show them. Yes, exactly, because everything's just duplicated, that's all it is. So I'm gonna move these over here. Okay. All right, and these are the backs. Okay. okay. All right, so the backs are uh, cut at 47 and 11 16 mm -hmm. finished at 39 and 11 16 right? Right, right, okay, exactly. Cool. Okay, cool, and now as you well know, these are 10 inches. The right, liner, the liner. Right. And the uh, skirt is 12, as we mentioned before. We're gonna show you why. So the okay? face fabric for the skirt is 12. Yes. Excellent. So what we need to do, now this is inner liner. This has a felt and a mm -hmm. smooth side. Any particular liner you don't need to have felt and a smooth side, not inner yeah. liner, okay? We like this, it's around the shop, we use it, that's it, okay? Yeah. So this makes it have a correct side and a wrong side because you don't want the felt on the outside when you roll over the skirt. So gotcha. what you would do, Wrong side, look for your arrow. Right, arrows are pointing up for both so of them up. towards you. We would take the liner and lay it, thank you, mm -hmm. correct side, meaning the smooth side. Mm -hmm. So correct side, the correct side. Now, if you wanted to, you can self-line your skirt. So that means using the exact same fabric as your face fabric for your liner. So you'd have one that's 12 and then one that's 10 Exact same premise, and you have to follow the same thing that we're doing here, good side to good side when you're about to sew it together. Yes, very good point, Grant. Okay, I'm gonna throw some pins in here. Excellent. You can definitely do that if you have enough fabric, absolutely. Yeah, and sometimes it's better off just in case if you're just doing this for yourself. You may not wanna buy two different types of fabrics, like liner fabric, and they're usually- Good point. I think they have a minimal this order. This guy's got all kinds of great points. That's funny. <laughs> I think it does do. have a minimum order, so. You're probably better off just doing uh, face fabric. Yes, yes. Inner liners primarily for draperies. Mm -hmm. Okay, but we have a lot of it around here, so we're gonna use that. Okay, so I'm putting some pins in here. Now there is a problem, which I know you're aware of, mm -hmm. but maybe you're not, that when you do these skirts and put them on upholstery, 
when you're um, uh, applying them, the the folds start to fall down. Right. So the returns for the skirts start to show uh, under or behind the actual skirt front. Yeah. So hopefully I can demonstrate it here. So we'll show you. This is a nice trick. Trust me, you're going to like this one. Reason is it saves you a lot of time. Yes. And heartache. It's not like gorgeous or anything. That's funny. Okay. So if you hold that end up for yeah, me, please. Yeah. So we got this here at the top when we line that up. Notice how the skirt's going, or the, the uh, fold is going up. Right. Okay? For some reason, you'll have this problem a lot of times when we just make them straight and you're, you're establishing the skirt onto the furniture, this will hang down. Right, so you see this return on, on the, the other side. side. Right. So if you even it up, and I'll show you how to do it, it's so simple. Mm -hmm. It's very simple, it's so simple, so simple. It's very simple, it's very simple, we make ourselves laugh. Um, all you do is cut off like a quarter of an inch, come my way, like maybe two and a half like inches. That. Yeah, something like that. It's similar to what you do to remove the do what they call the dog ears on throw pillows. Right, so it's a very small amount. Yeah. So the thickest mount is about a quarter inch that you yes. want to take off, and it tapers off. It tapers off. Into nothing. So just like that there, okay? So that'll eliminate that dropping down. Okay. Now, I'm going to take one of these over to the, to the machine, sewing machine, and do a half-inch seam right here at the bottom, okay? Okay. All right, so that's it. So that's the next step. We'll move over to the sewing machine. Excellent. Going to cut it or uh, sew it a half inch here. Don't forget the back stitch. Keep it nice and straight. You don't want any puckering. Make sure it stays even at the bottom. Okay, so I'm about to come to the end here, and I'll show you what I'm going to do real quick, all right? All right. I'm going to have to walk over. Here's our ending point. We just shifted a little bit where we took off that quarter inch. I'm going to walk over to the table. I'm going to leave the machine on. So we want it to end up like that, okay, where we have that half inch. That's why we did the two inches for uh, the skirts, a, a little larger, the top fabric, okay? Because you have a half inch here, a half inch here, and one inch in the bottom. That's the secret right there, okay? <laughs> so it rolls over so you don't see any liner fabric straight on, okay? So Just, this whole thing ends up at 10 inches, correct? After when you're all finished, it all ends up at 10 inches, yeah. Perfect. So, um, you're, once again, you got a half inch that's going to be eaten here, and you got a half inch that's already been eaten up here, and you have one inch here, so that is obviously two inches. That's why you do the top fabric two inches more, okay? Excellent. So what we're going to do now is, I'm going to show you real quick, just keep it rolling. I'm going to bring this up to the top. This is how we're going to like eat up our remaining one inch or inch and a half. Well, not the inch and a half, but the, the, the inch. The inch, because the, the other half is up here. Got it. Okay, makes sense? It does. So now, this came up a little short. That happens sometimes by the fabric being eaten up, but it's okay. It's okay, that happens. Well, I'm only gonna sew a quarter of an inch. It's gonna get real close right here, because I'm really close on that part. There's no need to iron this right now. And I'll, and I'll show you why.
All right, so the sides isn't much because you don't need much because watch this. I'll come over here after I cut these strays off. We're going to pull this through like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, take your regulator, set this one over here, put in your iron, or plug in your iron. Take your regulator and push the corners out. I want to iron from the cotton side, that's what this inner liner is. And even up the top here. Okay. Okay. Even that up. Hopefully the iron will be done here soon. This is the only way I can really do it. Hopefully you can too. Put your knee here. I put my regulator in there. I hope you can see this, Grant. Mm -hmm. And roll that out as you iron it. Just like that, because if not, it'll be pushed in some and not be even, okay? So you're taking your regulator and pulling it out, stretching it. Got it. Make sure the top is even with a um, top fabric, the liner that is. You're gonna see in a moment, this starts to shape up. That needs to come down some. So the, the sides of these skirts were only sewn in a quarter inch. Quarter inch, that's it. Got it. You can do a half if you want to, but quarter gives you just a little bit more fabric to work with if you need it. Plus, where's it going? Who's swinging on it, you know? True. Okay, let me do the same thing here. I went up too far that time, so I'm going to iron it down here first. I went too far up here. Mm. Take my regulator, do the same thing on the sides here. I'm pulling out the seam. Now the next move, oh, I'll flip this over for you in a second. I'm gonna bring this down, it's waving just a little bit. And we'll do a quick little test. I'm gonna stretch that a little bit. Do a quick little test as far as our distance. All right, we're looking good. We got our eight inches in there looking really good. And let's see how it ended up. Here's our test. I just wanna check that side to side. 10 and a half, dead on, 10 and a half. And that half inch is Perfect. actually gonna be sewn to the cording and stapled to the furniture. Yes. So the half inch will be eaten up. It'll be eaten up, I mean it's dead on half inch. Nice. Oh, 10 and a half. Okay, perfect. So now the next step is, let's get a half way mark here, okay? Okay. And cut off my sewing machine to save electricity. And we'll flip this over and do a small, or put a little small notch in the center. It's just always good to know your center, and that's where we're gonna get our buckram. Okay. So let's get the buckram and we'll show you how to put that in. Excellent. Okay, so there we go. This looks turned great. out well, right? Ten and a half. This looks to be one inch. It's that we not, you know? no. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Oh yeah, I'll show you, I'll show you. So oh, exciting this is. Yeah. Ooh, okay. Yeah, it is dead on. It is dead on, actually. Dead on. All right, perfect. Beautiful. Okay, so that's where I that's why that's why you do two inches, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. It looks better having your, your uh, top fabric roll up. Now we need buckram. Right. This is what it is right here. It's also called skirt tech. Yep, or skirt stiffener. Yeah. Try to say that. Right. And you know what you can do too? I've done this before a long time ago, and you can do this. If it's still in good shape, if you're working on a piece like your own or something like that, or even a client's and it's in good shape, 
then just reuse it. Say it ain't so. Say it ain't so, it's so true. I mean, if it's in good shape, it's not like been wrinkled mm -hmm. or creaked. When sometimes when people pick up furniture, yes. they'll take the skirt that has stiffener in it and push it up underneath there and lift it up and that's creasing it. So it's not gonna work, okay? Yeah. But you know, if it's in good shape, reuse it. I like that a lot. So what is this, back cushions? Yeah, this oh, is- back skirts? This is back skirts, so, man, I can't say it either. This is a back skirt right here, man. That is um, 39 and 11 16 finished. Now okay. you like to take out five eighths. Five eighths. Or three quarters. It doesn't make a difference. Either five, five eighths, eighths or three quarters. quarters. Is fine. Um, but we chose five eighths. Mm -hmm. In 16 terms, that is 39 and 1 16 that's taken away. You don't need that. So, okay. um, yes, yeah, so not 1 16 that's taken away, but it's after that's deducted, it's 39 and 1 16 So, enough mm -hmm. talk. Let's go ahead and measure real quick. I've got it at 39 because it's like he said, the 1 16 I mean, it's the 16th. Doesn't make a difference, right? Yeah. Where's my pen or a pencil? Okay. Right, you're, you're good? I am good. Okay, so we're not gonna mess with that 16th. We're gonna go to the top here. And back up here. Good. Okay, I got a straight edge here. Excellent. And we're gonna need two of these because we have two skirts. Man, I'm having a challenge. There we go. There's one. And we could just roll down and do another one if you want. I don't know, there's enough room. Yeah. 20, 39. Might as well, because this thing wants yeah, to keep rolling. Yeah, it's getting on my nerves. It is. <laughs> it is. All right, 39, right? 39, there you go. Got it, man. Another 39. You good? Yeah. You straight on the thing? Because it's kind of right. Drop. How there about you go. That? Is that good? Yeah, that's good. No, I was getting hard. <laughs> okay, there you go. Okay. Not enough wine, I guess. All right. So we'll make our line here. And it's gonna be true. Now we need to we need to make a halfway mark. Okay. Right. Oops. And don't crease it. Uh yeah, don't do that. I'm used to doing that, like folding it. And I'm gonna do it right here just as different. I just can't. Um don't we crease do, it. Don't crease it. Just go ahead and measure. Yeah, if you roll it in half to make the to make the halfway mark, or fold it in half rather, yes. you have a crease, and I promise you, it probably will be doing something like this. In the skirt. Because mm -hmm, it's called skirt stiffener, so it's going to want to shape the skirt. Exactly. So we got 39 there? We are at 39, so let's try to embarrass ourselves by figuring out the mass. That's 19 and a half, I think. Oh, look at you. Mm. All right. Uh, 39. Sure, why not? It is 19 and a half. Okay. Well, just flip it over and double check it, but I think it is. No, I think you're right. Give me this. All right, sweet. Right on, right on. Okay, where's the other one? Okay, cool. Is it the same here? Yes, sir. In fact, I like to make a little shortcut. That's a great idea. 39 and a half, there Amazing. you go. I like it, or I really do. 19 and a half. Okay, what did you say, 39 and a half? Yeah, I'm getting okay. tired. It's getting late. Okay, so now we have our skirt here with the halfway mark. Yes. All right, should I double check this here? Sure, why not? No, just kidding. <laughs> okay, so what we wanna do is get this in the front, okay? Okay. So, down the bottom is what I should say, not, not to the front, but down the bottom. Okay. Okay, can you hold that in? Yeah, yeah. So we take our halfway mark here on the skirt and halfway mark here on the skirt stiffener. You need to come to my, my way to the left. Okay. And then get that all the way to the bottom, okay? So it looks good in the front. How's the front look or the uh, halfway lineup? mark? Yeah. Oh, I'm down at the bottom. You? Uh, come my way a little bit. Okay. Just a little bit. Go okay. your way. There. Let's see here. Oh, yeah. Now we got a good. crease here because I, I ironed it, remember? Yeah. So I got a crease here. That's what we're pushing the buckram. Up against. Right, exactly. Right down in there. Nice. Skirt stiffener. Now here's a little trick. Yes. Okay, you can do one or two things. I'm doing this one because it's simple and fast. This is like an adhesive tape. That's activated by heat and steam. Exactly, so we take a little small amount and we're gonna lift up the liner and drop it on top of the stiffener. Okay. Okay, and then, wait, let me plug in my iron. Where's the iron? Iron's right here, I'll this plug her in. Cooled off by now. And we're gonna iron this down because we don't want this stiffener to shift left or right or even come up, okay? Got it. You can push it down, put a stick pin in it, the buckram I'm talking about, or stiffener, Go over to the sewing machine and, and base stitch it in place. I've, I've done that a lot more than I've done this. I'm just making this a little bit faster. That's all I'm doing. Like it. 
Okay, because you don't want the shift left and right. Try to wait for this thing. Oh, that's yeah, no, no worries. No, okay. We got that. So let's iron that thing flat, young man. You can do the whole thing. Nice. Looking good. You'll find out, like with many other projects, the key is preparation. Make sure yeah. everything is as clean, as right as it's supposed to be, and then you'll have less problems throughout the whole project. Ain't that the truth. It is. There we go. Looking good. Okay, so now our finished product needs to be what? What's our fold? Finished product will be 39 and 11 sixteenths. So let's see, 12 sixteenths would be 6 eighths. Okay. So we're probably going to shoot for that. Okay. So what we're going to do is fold these in, and you're going to see how cutting off the bottom stopped it from dropping down. And we want to come in about three and a half inches because that's what we added, which, which was um, eight inches. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because you need a, a, we did a quarter inch, but we did, you know, you, you have a half inch on your seam right, allowance. Right, seam allowance. We just add a little bit extra just to be safe. You're better right. off having more on your returns than not. Yes. Um, a deeper pleat's not necessarily a problem. No. A skinny pleat is. <laughs> a shallow pleat is yeah, a problem. It better is. Better word. I like it. Okay. So we're going to fold this over. Yes. And well, I forgot the number. What was it 39 and 11 sixteenths? 39 and 11 sixteenths. Okay. Right now we're dealing with three and a half right there. That's what it should be. Sweet. Three and a half. Sweet. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you're, I know what you're thinking. Stop, will you please? <laughs> I don't even know if this has enough marks on it to really tell. And it doesn't. Let's use the tape That's measure. That's okay. It's okay. If you fold that over. Yep. Three and a, so what was 39 and 3 16 or 11 16 mm -hmm. Okay, so we can come in more. Yeah, I think you need to come in a little bit yeah, more. Yeah, I had a side. lot more to come in. Okay, perfect. But see, we're not going to... That's good. It's good because we're only off by 3 16 It's going to be a left or a right. Nothing is going to be permanent right now. When it's going to be permanent is when we're sewing it onto the, the uh, band of the cord. So what, should we just like do a temporary iron on this yep, thing? Yeah, exactly. So exactly what we're going to do is a temporary iron. I got one more step and then we're finished. In fact, I got to show you this little guy here, the back plate. We're not done with that. There you go. Okay. I'm going to back this off. We have the advantage that this is a, there's a line in here. Mm hmm So I'm, I'm lining that up. A line in the pattern? Yes, sir. Yes, yeah, sir. Looking really good. So I like to give a nice heavy steam. <laughs> a little bit longer on that one. It's on fire. Da, 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 da. Okay. <clears throat> the bottom is too long. And the top is too, too long. long. That's okay. <laughs> because you know what? It's not permanent. See, we still have room. That's why you don't want to make the buckram right on. No. Because you can't come in. I've done it, and it's terrible. Right, so you have to take it back out. And guess what? We already glued the buckram in there, so good thing we don't have yeah. to. Yeah. So now it's okay because we're giving an idea where we want it. It's going to be fine. Right. We're going to uh, uh, sti uh, stitch the top a quarter inch. Okay. Now you might be tempted to say, you know, I'm going to skip a step. I'm going to make this thing exact where I want it and then sew it down flat. Then you have no room for adjustment. When we're sewing on the, the welt, the cording, mm -hmm. it's going to get a little bit stretched. The, the, um, a little bit more gathering is going on with the uh, skirts. So you want to be able to have that play at the end of your pleats. You know exactly what I'm and talking about. And if for some reason you do have to take your skirts all the way apart from the cording, then you have to take them apart individually as well. Not so going to be good. That's going to take a long time. Okay, so we're putting in the quarter inch seam right here at the very top. Make sure it's nice and flat and straight, no ripples. That's looking pretty good there. I don't know if you can see that or not. It's looking good, so there's no eating up too much fabric, as it were. Mm -hmm. Always backstitch. You probably already know that. I knew one seamstress, very good. She said she never backstitched. Okay. That was weird. Oh, almost folded it. Shouldn't do that. This is our little panel. I'm going to start off, make sure the arrow is right. Yeah, the arrow is right there, okay. 
Same principle. Half inch. Back panels do not get stiffener. They don't get stiffener. All I'm gonna do, same thing as you saw earlier. We're going to fold that up, sew in a quarter inch on the side, invert it, push the regulators in the corner, and iron it down flat. That's it. And then sew the top. Now the only thing mm -hmm. is too, you did not do the little cuts at the bottom because this one doesn't need it, correct? Good question, Grant. And you're gonna see that when we're sewing on the, um, the uh, welt because the back panels, you raise them up a quarter or three eighths of an inch. Mm -hmm. It's because, we, I'll show it to you later, but when, when you raise up three, uh, quarter, or a quarter or three eighths of an inch because when you roll it back down, if you make it even, you're gonna see that. I don't know why, it's just geometry or something. As it's coming out, it wants to hang down lower. So you do not need to do the corners here because we're gonna be pushing this up A higher. whole thing, a quarter yes. inch higher. exactly. Got it. Okay, so that's it. Now you know how to make the skirts. I mean, that is it. And um, I'm going to finish uh, the other one and uh, we're gonna make them uh, ready to go. Excellent. So you'll see us putting on the skirt. So, <laughs> what we're going to do is do the skirts now. Yeah. Okay, I've already started one or two on there. On the band, I'm gonna show you when we get over there. 
on the band, or I call it a band, but the actual cording mm -hmm. belt. Cording yeah, yes, belt, yes. We put on there like right B for right side back, okay, or uh, R, S for right side, so forth and so on. Get that, I'm gonna show you when, I, when we get over to the sewing table, but get that in the position where you, you can see it on top, you mm -hmm. know, the, the, um, the right back, whatever mm -hmm. you wanna start with, and get your uh, skirts, the panels, the panels in the right position. In the right, right position, and then get them ready. So let's go over to the sewing table. It's really easy. Okay. And um, let's get started. Let's do it. So what we have here, I've already sewn, I think, two on. Nice. And I'm working on the back. Okay. okay? And this is a back zipper, or a <laughs> back zipper. This is a, uh, a back panel as well. Okay? So this is a back panel because this one here is a right back, and you can see on the welt that we wrote is a left back. Got it. So obviously we're working in the, on, on the back right now. This was a heavy pen, okay, and a marker right there. Can you see that I hope? With Let the, me uh, zoom in real quick. Writing. So this is where we wanted our pleat. Okay. Okay, so again, left back, and I'm taking a back here, and this is all you do. Now there's no specific left black back no. panel, correct? No, they're equal. We they're split equal. them in half, good question. Okay, so I'm taking the fold that we did earlier, mm -hmm. and this is why we didn't want you to tack down because you don't know if you need adjustments or not. Right. You know, you might have one pleat that's three inches and the other one's three and a half. You know, no one's gonna be able to tell, it's no big deal. Butt them together. Okay. Okay, what matters is not this as much as this. This is what matters. Okay. Because this is what the people see. So make that look as straight as possible, even I should say. Take out our pen there. See, it's running a little higher than that one, but it's okay because what, what we need is the bottom. And I like to go over a couple times at the pleat area because sometimes, and you might see this, when we put this on the chair, there's a lot of tension, or the sofa, there's a lot of tension and they start to pull. Got it. You know what I'm saying? I do. I'm gonna roll right on down till we get to the next pleat. Now that pleat's folded underneath there. Mm -hmm. And that's another reason why you don't want the buckram to go to the end. See, I have room mm. to work with because if it's too tight, there's nothing you can do. If the buckram's, I don't know why, some people put their buckram all the way up to here. So you're sewing it through with the cording almost? What, the buckram? Yeah. No, the buckram's right here. No, no, but you're saying in your example. What was the example? I'm sorry. You were saying that the buckram is so high that it seemed like yes. you're sewing it with the cording? Right. It, there's no room for any error. You need room for error. You need room for flexibility. Got it. It makes your life a lot easier. Now, this is our wonderful, I love this machine. This is our wonderful walking foot. It's different. It handles thicker fabric. You can do this on a straight stitch. It's just everything uh, is a little easier over here on the walking foot, and uh, so I chose to do that. It's actually my favorite machine. Okay, so I'm trying to keep everything as straight as possible. We're coming up to a pleat, and you're gonna see this here. So my buckram is hitting right here, so I'm right at the end. Mm -hmm. So now you know why it's important to... Um, Leave that gap. Yes, sir, yep. Doesn't need to be inch every every inch covered. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So you can fold that in a good amount, actually. Another Oops, point is too, if I may yeah, jump in. Yeah, go ahead. The cording is good when you're putting it around the uh, actual sofa and you're keeping it at a certain tension. That's good because when you're sewing, you're pooling the cording as well, mm -hmm. which will keep it at that stretch tension as well. So if you didn't have it tight around your sofa. You could be pulling it a little bit too much when you're sewing. Mm -hmm. So you need it to be around the sofa quite tight when you're actually pinning it there. I'm actually pinning, uh, pulling this uh, welt pretty, pretty tight right now. Yeah. I don't know if you can tell or not, but I am. Okay, so right up to our pin. Now the next one I'm going to look at, or to find out what the next one is, I'm going to look at the our initial, that's LS, so that'd be the left side. So now I need to turn towards you and get a left side, excuse me. Mm -hmm. 
and this is the uh, side I've already put on one side on. So I just transfer the paper over. Got it. It just makes it easier. If you get yourself in a pinch, just do the measurements, look at your original measurements, and you'll know what's what. And we're going to needle down, line the bottom up, it's the same thing, repeat. Okay, take out that pen. Uh-oh, I didn't like that. I made a little bit of a gap, but it's okay. My back stitch. And we are going to keep going on until we get to the end here. Do the exact same thing. Read the next label, which, okay, I was like, I don't have one, <laughs> is the um, left front. That's an F, not an R. You can put on paper if you want. You got these little pieces of paper, but they might fall off, so that makes me a little concerned. So do both if you want. Okay. So this is the left front, so obviously I'm going to do a front skirt, and then when I come to the end, I'll come back to you, because we have these to put on, and uh, there's a small little trick right. to make sure. I think I already mentioned it, but... So you're yeah. just going to keep going around until you reach the end of the loop, and then it butts up to the previous, or the first skirt that you, panel that you put on, correct? The last one butts up to the, to the first one. That's it, man. Excellent. You got it. And this is one, like you said, it's one big loop running up underneath here. Um, and just try to keep it all heading the same direction because if not, you're flipping it. I've been there before. You're flipping this thing, trying to straighten it out. So that's it, it's great. So Let's there do you it. go. Excellent. All right, so we are putting on the back panels and it can be a little challenging with all the stiffener in here, but that's okay. We're gonna line these up again the best we can. You can see here as well how we cut up on that and it's, it's staying away from the end. You see how we cut up on the, the corner here? Mm -hmm. So it's staying away from the end. It's, please do that because you're just gonna absolutely hate it yeah. when these are dropping down. Been there, hated it. Cut that corner off. Okay, so now we're gonna do the back panel. It's important to raise the back panel. There's another little trick. Up, I made marks for us to make it a little easier. Up a quarter or three eighths of an inch, okay? So if you make it even, it's gonna do the same similar principle as it does at the corners. Mm -hmm. It's going to drop down, okay? So we're going to raise it up three quarters, um, excuse me, um, raise it up um, three eighths or a quarter. So all I did is I took this marker, it's a guideline, it's not like a guarantee, okay? But this should be about three quarters or three quarters of an inch down because it should have been a half inch. So I went down three quarters and that would give us a quarter up mm -hmm. if I follow the pen mark, okay? Got it. So I did all those in advance to make it a little easier. Because you may think, I don't know what 3 eighths or a quarter is. I can't eyeball that. So if you do that on the panel, you should be fine. So I'm gonna lay that right where- The needle you, would be sewing. Thank you, yes. Okay. Now you can see why a walking foot, because it, 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 it goes over top and under the, uh, the fabric would be so much easier than a straight stitch. But you can do it with a straight stitch. This is very thick right here, but it can and it is often done on just a simple straight stitch, not a walking foot. I'm seeing how things are lining up at the bottom and we're looking pretty good. Just trying to make sure that that pen mark I made is in the groove. And then simply take that out. Oh, okay, that's fine. Take that out, snip that. Snip this, it's just gonna become a problem for you later on. And let's do one more, okay? Because right. I've already done all of them. Nice. There's, I think there's six in total, yes. Again. I'm going to put the needle down starting back here. Get rid of the excess. Okay. Even them up.
making that pen mark sit right in the groove of the welt, which is on the other side. Making sure things look good to my left here at the bottom, that's what really matters. And that is it. See, look at that. See, we're coming up a little bit. You see, about a quarter of an inch. Mm-hmm. Okay, so Let you zoom do, in on that real yeah, quick. Yeah, please do here. Three-eighths or a quarter of an inch. Yep, got it. And we have the nice curve. It's very important. Less troubles, the better off everybody is. Okay? Excellent. So we're going to take this out, and the next step is to staple it on. Okay, so we got the skirt laying in the right direction. They get a little twisty. It's going to do the same thing to you. Right. Just keep flipping, flipping, flipping until you find it. You want it on the outside. Okay? It can be a little bit of a puzzle, but you'll yeah. get it where you want it. Yes, exactly. So you're going to see why, okay, later on. Uh, but we have it on the outside. Okay. Very nice. When I took off the machine, it was on the inside, meaning the white was on the outside. We flip, 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 and got it right. Okay, all right. So this is ready for rewrapping. Right, and that's the next thing that we're gonna show you, but we have to get on to other work now. So what we're gonna show you tomorrow. We're divided. We're yeah, divided, we're yes. We're very divided. <laughs> so what we're gonna show you tomorrow is actually putting in the insert and then also the skirt as well, mm -hmm. putting that on. And that's it, yeah. really, I that think. Be rolling. Yeah. yeah, we'll see you tomorrow. All right, so we'll see you then. Actually, right now. <laughs> All right, so now it's time to go ahead and put on the skirt for our sofa. This yes. is an exciting time because it's so close to being done. That's right. It's, it's going to look great really too. good. Yeah, she's going to love it. Yeah, seriously. She will. She's gonna be so how are we going to head and put this on? Uh, you might think, oh, we'll just go, you know, one arm here yeah. and then over the other. It doesn't fit. Okay. It's too tight. It's too tight. Uh, most furniture is not exactly square, so it flares <laughs> out a little bit more. And then when you have these scrolls, it makes it even worse. So you have to go from the bottom up. Okay. Okay. Excellent. And then we still have our mark. We still have our chalk yes. mark. Now, the seam of the actual cording that we have on here, mm -hmm. that you want to be on top, not just on top of the chalk mark, but on the top of the chalk mark. Yeah, the, the welt itself yes. will be on, on top, like you just said, yes, okay, on top perfect. there. So when you see these stitches here with mm -hmm. the welt, that's going to be uh, resting right where this chalk line is right there. Got it. Okay. Okay. Excellent. So that, and then we'll put some cardboard strip. But you'll, you'll see all this in the video. Mm -hmm. And then we'll put some cardboard strip over it. We do anchor it first without cardboard strip. We get it in the spot we like. Do some measurements. You know, see if it's where you want it to be. Um, and then uh, put one, two, three anchor mm -hmm. um, staples. Actually, permanent ones. Not just permanent anchors. staples. Okay. And then once we have that established all around, then we start putting on the cardboard. Excellent. Okay. All right. So first thing we got to do is lift this up and bring it on over. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so I've got a side here. You got the side here. I do. I do, and that that should be the back here. Yep. Yeah, it is. Okay. okay. So right. we're gonna go ahead and lay it like this, right? Yep. Lift up the sofa. Yes. Hold on, I gotta get my side down. There we go. Okay, that side's down. It sometimes can be a real pain to get it to go underneath or to get it to uh, come up. I'll get it on the back. I want it to be tight but not ridiculous so I got this corner up yeah, can you come my way a little bit yeah go ahead okay are you on the corner I hope I am okay good you can come your way just a little bit more if you want uh, I'm okay right here okay let's uh, let's get, let's lay it down and get the front up okay I wish it was a little tighter but I think it's gonna be okay I'm liking it. it. It'll be okay. I wish it was a little bit tighter. It's looking good. Go ahead and pull that underneath there, please. Okay, so let's do... So you're folding, just to explain to them too, we're folding the seam allowance right here under. Now it's a little loose in the back, but that's okay. We're obviously going to be stapling it. It's not going to be holding itself up. Yeah, I do wish it was a little tighter, but I'm, I'm sure it's going to be okay. Yeah. Okay, I've had them where they're too tight. I've had them where they're definitely too loose. It has to do with that welt. Are we doing okay back there? Yep, this is the Goldilocks sofa. Okay, so yeah, right, not too tight, too loose. Okay, let's go ahead and establish a few staples like I said. Okay. And uh, then we'll be right back with you. Excellent. Okay, so what we're gonna do is just continue to staple. See, sometimes they're not catching, okay? 
So maybe turn your staple sideways. Got an angle. Yeah, for some reason it's not catching in this angle, in this area rather. Now we're using 916 staple. Okay. Didn't catch right there either. 916 staple, this is cardboard strip. You do not put the cardboard strip behind here, the back panel. Now we establish where we want the skirt to stay, just a little bit above the chalk mark. Okay, so the welt here is sitting on top of the chalk mark. And when I flip this up, you'll see the seam allowance, I mean the, the, uh, the stitching right here, right be below the welt, that is where the white chalk mark is, okay? So let me put one more in here just to establish it. A little awkward at this angle with the table. Okay, so now I'm gonna take this cardboard strip, put it right up to the end right here of the back pleat, okay, back panel. Put the cardboard right up in there. and staple up toward the top of the cardboard. Just like that. Go all the way down. That one's a little too high. I'll just put one underneath it, or in between there between this one and that one, it went down a little lower. Now our end piece here, our end skirt, or the corner rather, you do not put the cardboard there. It just gets too thick, okay? See if it's still working as far as uh, lining up. Looks like it is. And you're gonna need a 916 staples because it just gets too thick with all these layers of fabric. And that's it. Now, another thing you can do, I gotta still finish that up there. But you can see it's nice and strong, tied up against the frame. You can take a mallet. Hand me that there, please. Yes, sir. It's looking Thank great, you. by the way. Thank you. You can take a mallet, I found this white one's very, very old. I've had it for many years. I have a, a, a black one too, but it'll mar the fabric, okay? Mm -hmm. So if you can only get a black mount, these are very handy in upholstery. Put a piece of fabric over top of it. You can bang down the corners gently like this when it's too thick. This fabric's not that bad. Actually, see this here? I got a staple up higher on that. So let me lift this up again. Yeah and just keep examining it. You are gonna staple more up toward the welt according. Now you can swing from that skirt now. <laughs> Pretty sad, now just, oh, this, yeah, it's the white one, that's the one I want. Just gently knock that down like that. This fabric's not that thick. Sometimes you'll get a velvet, very thick, and it just wants to flare out a lot. But it's looking pretty good. I'm gonna finish this up here. We got the back to do. Grant's working on that. I think his gun broke or something. Yeah, my gun got jammed, but took off the front panel, got the shard. There was a staple shard that got stuck between the hammer okay. and the, um, the guide. So uh -huh. I just took that out real quick and it should be fine now. Okay. So we're gonna continue on the back. Yep, I'm gonna pin this up so that stays out of my way. Skirt. Mm, there we go. And I'm just about out of staples. Once again. Is it working now? Oh yeah. Good. Just for emphasis sake, staple all the way down toward the top. Now, if you have a problem for your staple to catch, because I've had a few problems in the front, you can do it at this angle. It's fine. And that might get you to grab some wood. 
That angle also does help too when you're on a floor because most likely you don't have a table you're working with. Mm -hmm. So it's hard to get that angle straight on. That's true. I have to turn my gun upside down right now. Exactly. And go to the end and then I'll pull down this skirt and see how it looks. And right there at the end, you can just pull that off the cardboard. Okay, let's see how it looks. I haven't done this here yet, though. That's looking good. You might need to do a little steaming. Nothing's perfect. The steaming helps a lot to loosen the fabric. Make it more pliable. But there you go. Now that's looking really sweet. And now it sinks a little bit into our table, as we mentioned earlier. So we should be right on our mark off the floor, what we wanted, okay? We'll continue around the back and then um, we'll let you see the finished product when it's all done, after we steamed it and everything. Man, it looks really good. It does, it turned out really nice. I like the evenness on the bottom, that's what we're gonna shoot for. Let's pat each other on the back now. That's crazy, I tell you what, she just pat me with a check. That's funny. Okay, if you're using a velvet, <laughs> I don't know you said that. If you're using a velvet, I would not, I don't know if I'm in the, in the shot or not, I would not steam it. I don't recommend steaming if you're using a velvet. No. Okay, so test your fabric before you actually start to steam it. But it does make a big difference when you steam it. I know, and now it's finally looking like a finished piece. All right, guys, you have made it to the end of this video, and you are absolute troopers. This is a long video. We haven't put out a video this long in quite some time. So. Thank you guys so much for watching. Now you guys know how to replace a damaged skirt or create an entirely new skirt for whatever project you're taking on, which is pretty cool. Next week, we are gonna be tackling the outside back of your furniture. This is great because the outside back, along with the outside arm, tend to get damaged either by pets or when you're moving. And once when that's damaged, you can't really do anything about it except get the whole thing reupholstered or that section reupholstered. But the good news is it's really easy to do that because the outside back is one of the first things to come off and one of the last things to go on when it comes to reupholstering. So you guys are gonna learn that next week. So again, we really appreciate you guys watching this video, staying through the whole video. You guys are awesome. If you like this type of content, don't forget to give it a like. If you want to see next week's, don't forget to subscribe. And if you have any questions, always leave them in the comment section or any advice, maybe like, hey, maybe next time, not so long in a video. Totally understand, this isn't gonna happen that often. But then again, we do tend to have some pretty long videos. But enough of that, I look forward to seeing you guys next week.